Dude, spoilers. The combat sound effects in Fire Force are by far some of the best parts of the show. They are so much fun to listen to and give each fight a layer of depth and a punch that is hard to match. One character that represents this incredibly well is none other than Juggernaut. One thing that I've noticed about the combat sound effects in Fire Force is that a lot of the punches actually sound like gunshots. This is an interesting approach to take while making a show about fighting. A lot of the fights are hand-to-hand, -hand, and while the characters with special pyrokinetic abilities have their own unique sounding effects, there are plenty of moments where the fights are predominantly physical. In a conventional fight scene, the sound effects would be much different. So let's compare the two. These types of sound effects are typical for a normal fight. You have your contact sounds for punches and kicks, your impact sounds for heavy attacks or concussive damage, and clothing sound effects for grapples and movement. In Fire Force, things are weighted a little bit differently. There isn't an emphasis placed on realism. Therefore, clothing sound effects are often overlooked, and the contact sound effects are usually elevated by making them sound like gunshots. So why would Koyama do this? I believe there are a few reasons. First is that you can elevate the severity of the contact by making it a more intense sound. A gunshot blasting out and reverberating packs more of a wallop than a dull punch sound does. Second, you are reinforcing the story's core mechanic. These characters are pyrokinetic users and wield flames to do their bidding. What better way to subconsciously remind the viewer of that than by using the sound profile of a chemical reaction? Gunpowder is harmless until you introduce a spark. Then you are met with an explosive wave of sound. Third, and maybe most importantly, it's just cool. And these are just the sound effects for the punches and kicks. Once we start looking at the impact sound effects of the show, then the fun really begins. One character who shines here is Juggernaut. In his fight with Orochi, Juggernaut became a beloved character by many. I believe a large part of that has to do with his sound design and character. Juggernaut is often seen as a scared and reluctant person, and this is reflected in the fight and how he handles himself. Juggernaut doesn't like using his pyrokinetic ability, and he hates conflict. He comes from a family of farmers and is a little socially awkward. While his frame hulks over the rest of the other cast of characters, it's because he wears so many layers of clothing. While he tries to avoid fighting as much as possible, things quickly change when the girl he likes is in danger. Juggernaut steps up to protect Tamaki and begins his fight with the white-clad Orochi. The sounds here are a mixture of humorous squeaks while Juggernaut restores his damaged limbs and incredibly deep, resonating booms showing off just how much power he is packing. His first few attacks are ineffective and he begins to realize that he has to go all out. He sustains heavy damage throughout the fight, and as the layers peel away, we can finally see his determination reveal itself. He risks his life and limb to finally deliver an attack powerful enough to stop Orochi. But he does more than stop her. Juggernaut completely annihilates her. I really do love this character, and I love the sound design of Fire Force. Seeing as how this is the final episode of this sound design series, I wanted to share something that I thought was special. A YouTube channel called JoJo's Bizarre Sound Design reached out to me after the first episode of this series dropped. I had actually found this channel while I was researching making these videos. 
If you are into sound design like me, then please give his YouTube channel a look. He even has resources where he has isolated and ripped the sound effects from Koyama's shows and has provided a way for you to download them so you can design your own sound effects just like Yasumasa Koyama. I can't recommend it enough. This video was made possible by the awesome supporters on Patreon. Thank you all so much. If you want to get behind the scenes content and early access to new videos all for free, please consider checking it out. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm Drew Malou and I will see you storytellers in the next video.